Hello, crypto boys and ghouls, and welcome back to the channel, Tales from the Cryptmancer, where we feature content on play to earn games on the blockchain, such as Splinterlands. And in today's video, I wanted to dissect some of the reward data that's been made available to us uh, from a community member, Commander Chaos, via the Mav chats. Um, if you haven't been following the Mav chat and haven't seen this information, again, I wanted to create this quick video to talk about that data and uh, present it to you and talk about some of the findings because well, I don't think a lot of people on YouTube have at least covered this from a content perspective and I didn't want the data to slip through the cracks. So I wanted everyone to have visibility to it and I wanted to present it to you. So uh, let me, before we, I guess, go into the data, Again, let me send a shout out to Commander Chaos for sharing this data with the community via MavChat. And the way he has actually gathered the data that we're going to review here in just a minute is he's actually been scrubbing the uh, Splinterlands blockchain and basically pulling all the data for any time a uh, reward chest is claimed on the blockchain. And he's been using a cloud server to gather all this data, compile it, and provide the reporting information that we're going to review here shortly. So that's the source of the data, uh, just so you know. And before we go into the data itself, it, it probably is good that we once again quickly review the reward chest value as compiled by splinterlands.rentals. And I'll provide a link to this tool in the video description below, should you wish to view this data yourself. Again, just from a level setting perspective, uh, as we look at these reward chest datas uh, and the data sets, uh, it's good to understand kind of what the values are right now. So champion chests are coming in at roughly 50 cents value per chest, diamond chests at 21 cents, gold chests at 14 cents, silver chests at around seven cents, and bronze chests at around three cents uh, per chest in value. Now let's take a look at Commander Chaos's data sets. Now these data, uh, there's two sets of data on this particular image. One on the left-hand side is coming from June 19th, so about three days ago. And on the right-hand side, the columns there are data from June 20th. Uh, and what I want to first focus on here are the chests that were claimed and the number of players that claim the chess. So the chess tier here, this column on the far left, uh, tier zero is bronze, tier one is silver, tier two is gold, tier three is diamond, and tier four is champion. And what we can see here is that on June 19th, there were 44,524 players, or excuse me, daily active accounts, that actually claimed reward chests on June 19th. Now, what's interesting about that sum of data is it is a lot different than probably one would expect, especially if we're used to pulling daily active user data from the Peak Monsters dashboard. And I'll show you that here. Uh, for June 19th, the daily active accounts that Peak Monsters captured and published was 137,186 active players on June 19th. Now that is obviously substantially different than the total here that Commander Chaos is presenting of 44,524. Now the data is being captured differently and showing different things, but it is here interesting to see that the data that Peak Monsters is capturing, which my understanding is it is capturing any time a account interacts with the Splinterlands blockchain through a JSON transaction, which could include things such as renting out a card passively in the game, or perhaps logging into the game, um, you know, renewing a focus, uh, those type of activities, interactions with the game, Whereas what Commander Chaos is capturing is uh, actually daily active accounts that are actually claiming rewards. 
claiming that reward chest, clicking that button, getting enough reward shares to at least claim one chest in a day. So you can argue that this number, 44,524, represents a combination of human players and bots that are most active in the game that are, quote, players that are, you know, well, I guess for lack of a better definition, actively getting rewards in the current system. Now, what is also interesting to note is if we look at the total players at the bronze and silver tiers, so zero and one, uh, combined, it's roughly almost 92% of the player base is playing at the bronze and silver level to claim rewards. And that is interesting because Matt and Agro specifically have said that the goal of the new rank reward system is to incentivize players to combine their accounts into one account and climb as high as they can in the league levels to get the most rewards. And we can see here that at the top level on June 19th, there were 323 players that claimed champion rewards in all of Splinterlands in the universe, which is roughly less than 1% of the total players that day that claim rewards. So even if we go down to Diamond, the combined number there is roughly 1,300 players out of 44,000. So roughly 3% of the player base are playing at the highest levels of the game. So definitely there is some work to be done there to encourage players to play higher, I would think. And we're going to see some of the data and the value here on possibly why the majority of players are content. And I say players, meaning players, humans or bots, are content to play at the bronze and silver level from a reward perspective. Let's take a look at some of this data and see why that might be the case. One other thing before we go into some of the chest data is let's just look at the multiplier here. So if we look at the silver level players, 20,383, if we pull out our handy dandy Windows calculator here and divide the silver players by the champion players, what we see is for every one champion player, there's about 63 silver players. Uh, just keep that in mind. So a 63x on the silver players versus champion players. And if we are to do the math here and add up the silver plus bronze player levels and divide that um, by the champion players, there's roughly one champion player for every 126 uh, bronze or silver player in the game. So that's the ratios that we're seeing right now. So if we go up to the top of this data, what do we see here? We see that at the champion level on June 19th, there were 1,935 chess claimed for champion level players. And I want to set the table here and kind of show the average number of chess being claimed at each level, because I think that's important before we start discussing the rewards. So let's do some quick math here. So 1,935 chess divided by... Uh, 323 champion players, which means on this day, the average champion player got six chests at the champion level. And if we do the same analysis for diamond, the number of chests that the uh, average number of chests that the diamond player claimed that day was 4.6. And if we look at the gold average, that is going to be, whoops, sorry. Let me redo that. One, five, five, three, five, divided by the number of gold players, 24.95. Uh, 6.2 average chess at the gold level claimed. And then if we do the silver chess level, divided by the silver chess players, an average of 4.8 silver chests per silver player. And at the bronze level, the average is going to be 4.8. If I could type, that would be helpful. Let's try that one more time for the audience. 
the bronze chest average is 6.3. So somewhere between six chests, between six to four and a half. So somewhere between four to six chests average per league level. Roughly speaking, a plus or minus one or two there. So it's not like there's a, you know, 10 chest difference at the bronze level versus champion. It's, it's all around there between four to six, roughly speaking. So keep that in mind as we look at the rewards here. What's interesting here, as we look at the packs here, even though there's a 4.5% pack drop for championship players compared to silver, which are getting roughly a 0.73 or roughly 1% pack drop, when you're only getting six chests, or let's say on average five chests a day, um, the difference between 4.5% and 1% on five chests is not really substantial. So what we're seeing here is even though, as we talked about, there's a 63x roughly difference in the number of champion players versus um, uh, silver players, the difference in the rewards here is pretty small. So we have, let's say, roughly 100 packs given away to the champion players and 700 given away to the silver players. So roughly the difference in packs there, differential, is a 7x even though there is a difference in player numbers there by 63x. So it is, you know, somewhat noticed here, but, you know, maybe not too much. So again, uh, 323 champion players, uh, roughly, let's say, 25% of those maybe got a Chaos Legion pack that day here, versus even though there was a greater number, 718 chests given out, or excuse me, packs given out at the uh, silver level, it's because, well, there's 20,000 silver players, so there's going to obviously be more uh, Chaos Legion packs given out. Now, what is interesting to note here is the DEC payout. The DEC payout here at the champion level, there was 619,000 DEC given out to 323 champion players, which is an average of roughly 19 17. So roughly 2,000 DEC uh, per champion player is the average there. Whereas at the silver level, there was 1.72 million DEC given out. But because there are more players at silver, the average DEC value given out to silver was 85 DEC. And to put that into perspective, let's just do quick math here. So let's say the value of DEC being 0 0.0007 times 1917. That means the average value received by a champion level player on June 19th was roughly $1.34. So there you are seeing where there's a lot of value, uh, probably a majority of the value of the champion chess coming from DEC, especially when you hit a big DEC payout. It's going to cause your average over time to be roughly in this dollar thirty four range. So there, where is what we're seeing? Interestingly enough, that a majority of the champion rewards are being paid out in DEC more than anything else. Definitely not cards. As we look at the potion here, the percentages: thirty percent potion drops compared to roughly twelve percent for champion level. Now this is where we have some interesting data as well. We see that there was roughly a thousand reward cards given to champion players at a roughly a 50% drop rate. And at the silver level, there was roughly 37,000 reward cards given to silver players at roughly a 38% drop rate. So the ratio of the gear there again between reward cards uh, champion to silver is a little bit different. If we do the math here, let's do that, 36,841 divided by 966, it's roughly a 38x uh, advantage to the silver level players, even though that they outnumber the champion players, let's say 63 to one. And that's where we're seeing a little bit of the drop rate difference here, closer to 50%, giving a little bit of an edge to uh, champion players on the drops here, uh, given the smaller player numbers here. But what's interesting here is, again, a champion player has roughly the same drop chance at a common 
reward card in their chest as a silver uh, player. So really the only benefit they get is a small boost on gold foils and legendaries. Other than that, their chances of getting a common are pretty much the same as everyone else. So again, the value of these reward cards, even though they have a higher percent drop chance, is not as great because, again, with DEC, the DEC difference here is that 48x multiplier once a DEC is dropped. And that's where we're seeing the value for Champion Chess really um, be right now. Now, reward card golds here, you can see the percent chance, 1% roughly for the uh, silver level and 4% for the gold roughly, but there were 737 gold reward cards given to silver players versus 84 for champion players. So again, here what we're seeing, it's due to the large number of silver players, over 20,000 there, uh, you know, giving them at a 1% drop rate, uh, the most gold reward cards. And bronze, even though it has, if they have the same number of players, well, they have basically a, a much lower uh, reward chance here for gold foil, giving them, you know, less overall gold foil reward cards, but still more than the champion players got dropped. So the TLDR here, when we look at all this data, two points that I would say are worth taking away. One, the active players that are claiming rewards on a daily basis bots and humans included, is roughly 44,000 to 50,000, which is much smaller than previously uh, data that we had looked at and thought to be real. And then also roughly 92% of the player base is playing at the bronze and silver level, not at the highest levels of the game. One last point I'll leave you to take away from this is that um, you know, Commander Chaos has mentioned of this 44 to 51,000 daily active claiming accounts. Uh, he believes he has data on bot farms to suggest that over 50% might be bots based on the transfer of cards uh, between accounts that he's also scraping off the blockchain. So uh, that means that roughly we might have somewhere between 20 to maybe 25,000 real human players actively playing and claiming rewards on a daily basis, which is interesting to keep in mind as we look at data and metrics around print rates, uh, market uh, cap, and market transactions and rentals moving forward. So there we go. Some of the data, uh, the other data here that is shown is a three-day period from 617 to 620 that he shared. This is a summation of data. It basically falls in line with all the other data that we saw, uh, saw before in the previous uh, image around the daily averages. Uh, I will share these links coming from Discord in the video description below. Uh, hopefully you're able to access them via the URL in the video description so you can dissect this data on your own. Let me know in the comments below if this data was helpful for you to see if you had not been aware of it already and what you conclude and what you think of this data. Until next time, keep stacking those stats.